Okay, now is a good time to step back from that painting a bit and see what it needs. Well, the darks in a lot of places are a lot darker than what I have them. And the sky should be emitting light, therefore lighter than the leaves. So I'm going to have to lighten up the sky, um, darken the shadows in almost every area. Maybe add a bit of extra light on the leaves. In short, I have to increase the contrast everywhere. So we've done dark, medium, and light to a degree in every little area, but now we have to go further because um, it's looking very flat and it is the contrast, the difference between the light and the dark, which makes for uh, a sort of a 3D feeling or it going into the distance. So um, the most obvious things are lightening the sky and darkening the shadows, at least along the path. So we'll start with doing some of those. Okay, so I have my palette ready. I'll try and lighten the sky first. At least at the edges where it meets the leaves. It doesn't necessarily have to be light everywhere, but where it meets the leaves, it needs to be lighter so that it can contrast against them and appear to be behind. Or brighter, more, like, more important. It needs to be brighter than the leaves, which are solid forms, whereas the light is giving light. The sky is giving light, sorry. Okay, so I'm mixing up a lighter version of that blue, which is just stable blue and white, but more white. I'm going to add it around where the leaves meet the sky, and that's not much of a color, so... I'm wondering if there's something on my brush here. It's very dull. Hmm. I'll just put just plain white over top of this color. I'm gonna Yeah, put white over top. It's always a good idea to take breaks and get back from your painting so that you can see how it's progressing. You need to do the work standing closer because you don't have a 10 foot paintbrush, but as soon as you can, get back from it and see how it's going. That's super important. It's so easy to get lost in details when you're up close and you can't really get an idea of the big picture. So here I'm just trying to up the contrast between the leaves and the sky at the edges of the leaves. It's going to be at the edges of the trunks too. Now we had a nice smooth sky, now we have a patchy sky, but we're not going to worry about that at this time. That might not show up yet. We might have to do another coat. But acrylic will dry darker than what when you first put it on. That's because the acrylic paint is in acrylic medium. And the acrylic medium is white, but it dries clear. It's white when it's wet. And that means that the wet version is lighter than the dry version. So it may fade into the painting is what might happen as it dries. Bring a little light in between these. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. You can blend the edges, but it probably doesn't need it at, as yet anyway. I bet that fades. Okay, now we're going to go into darkening up some of the shadows. This picture is very strong as regards light and shadow. So I think I mentioned before that yellow and black make a great green. So I'm going to mix yellow with the black to get a dark green. And go in here with that So 
So these um, bushes are going dark, medium, light at the top, and even a line of extra light along there, then dark again. So this is like the medium dark I'm putting on. Once I get those trunks in of the trees, that'll help help us see what's going on too. A bit darker back here than what I have had it. Okay, and I'm going to go even darker. I'm going to use black, but I'm going to mix it with some red. Because black by itself, not too sure why. Maybe because we don't know what they're putting in it, oftentimes. Depending on which black you use, or whose black you use. But red will make that black seem more natural. I was going to say human, but not human. More natural. Okay. Put that. I don't think darker. Put that dark in here. It really does go to black. You could go straight in with the darkest color right off the bat, but I'm a little more hesitant than that. I'd like to make sure things are in the right place before I really commit. That doesn't mean you have to. If you, can, if you want to go for it right away, that's fine. Everybody paints differently. Yeah, I'm adding a, I added a bit of blue to it too. I want this to have some depth. More red. More black. More blue. All colors together make black, so you don't have to worry about mixing all these colors in because they'll make black anyway. Yeah, darker. This whole thing is darker here. Here, this is going in here, very dark along the bottom where the trail meets the bushes. Okay, so on every area I'm going to do this, dark, medium, light, well we've done the dark, medium, light, but lighter in the lights and darker in the darks. So I'm going darker here, I'm going to bring some extra darks into that path. I'm going to bring some extra darks into the leaves because some of them actually read black because of the sky being behind, especially these dark. And then when I've done that, we'll start and put those trunks in and see what happens there. So go ahead and do that, and I'll do that, and then we'll go for the trunks, okay? Good luck. Hi, before I get going with that, I just realized a huge thing that needs to be fixed on my painting, so I may as well show you how to fix something in acrylic. Once it's um, completely dry, it's not so easy to do this, but while it's thin layers, it is easy. So this is on too much of an angle and should be straighter, so I'm going to bring this up here by taking paint out here. Now, you can do that by scrubbing quite hard on the paint and wiping it off. See how that comes clean? That's because it's a thin, watery coat in the first place. If this didn't work, if it was too too um, strong adhered there, then I would have to paint over it. But this is actually easier because then I don't have to worry about two coats and so on. So we're going to lift that bridge up to where it looks right, which is more like there. Maybe even more. A little bit more. I think this happened because I'm painting from the side here while well, trying to do this video, so... You can add paint and you can take paint off, so that's a good lesson to learn here. Okay, and then I'll have to paint that back in. I'm going to try and raise the top too and just see if it looks more reasonable before I continue on with my darks and lights since I just noticed it by staring at me in the face which is what happens when you get away from it which is good so um, I always have to fix things in my paintings however part of the joy also I wanted to mention um, that everybody's painting is going to look completely different from mine and from each, from each other's too. 
and that's the way it's supposed to be and that's what's so fascinating about art is you bring to it what you see and what your feelings about it are and so on and they show up in the painting regardless of whether or not you want them to now that's going to be better i think it actually ends more like there okay now i cut this back too I think that's not too much of an angle as well. So again, with the wet brush, I'm going to scrub it like crazy. This brush cannot be a wimpy brush. It has to be a good strong brush with hard bristles for, for it to work. It, if the bristles are too soft, this won't work. It's always good to keep old brushes around that are somewhat damaged because they make, if they're hard, they make great scrub brushes. Okay, so that's how to fix a mistake. And then we just go back in and paint it up again. Okay, so that's part of checking it before you go too far and you can't get past to where you can um, fix it. Okay, we're back. So having darkened up the darks, as dark as they are, which is really to black, and lightened the lights, which I could do even more because some of these um, lights are very close to white. The light shining on them makes them so. And I lightened a little bit of the sky just where it meets the leaves. Um, at this point, um, we can start putting in the foreground trees. And then once those are in, we'll have a look at the whole because we really don't know composition wise or painting wise, whether or not it's working as a whole until we get those in because they're part elements of the composition. Once they're in, then we'll know, okay, we have to go brighter here than darker there. You can only go as best as you know at a certain stage. So as far as I know, this is, you know, the best I can do. And then we'll take it to the next step and then we'll see if what we did was enough or if we need to improve it. All right, so we're gonna go with the foreground now, which is the tree trunks and the four leaves and the two figures also. So, um, I hope you can see this, although you might not be able to. The figures are almost in black and black, and so is the foreground. It's very dark, dark brown, black, or dark, dark green. So we'll start with those colors. So to make a dark, dark green, I've got blue, and yellow, of course, they make green. And then I'm going to add black. If it's too bright, which we won't know till we make it, then the way to make a more dull green is to add the opposite color, which is red. Actually, this color is just the yellow and the green. It's not too bad for the overall leaves. We can go darker in the darkest leaves, but we'll start with this. Okay, so we're putting in the foreground. I don't think I want that there. Okay, foreground, hmm, that paint is not thick enough because you can see things are gonna show through. So I have to dry my brush off a bit. For paint to be thicker with acrylic paint, all it means is less water. If you can't get it thick enough with no water, then you have to graduate, so to speak, to a heavy body acrylic. There is such a thing. And even those half the time don't seem to be heavy enough, but, or that other trick that I told you about before, which is where you try and get the half dried paint from the lid or from uh, the rim of a lid, or maybe where it's been sitting out for a while. Okay, so this isn't the darkest of the green, but it is appreciably darker than what's been going down before. And we're making general leaf shapes, not individual leaf shapes. It's the overall area of leaves, which I hope you have a photo printed out of this picture that you can compare it to. So we're not going to individual leaves yet. We may not, if we don't have to, we're not going to because it's a lot of work. And if we get enough of the idea of leaves without doing that, then even better. There are some coming in here. 
And when we've done this, and we add the darker yet, then we'll know if our sky is light enough. Okay, so down here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna watch you up. I wanna thicken up that green there. I can see right now that it's not, can't see it strong enough. And so I tried to put some of the same color green on, which is the right color, but it's too thin and the underground or the behind black shows through. So we have to add some white to our mix so that it will show up without making it too light. Okay, let's try that. No. Nope. Oh, it's showing up anyway. Not wonderfully, but it is showing up. Okay. And also up here. It's just that I noticed that. This not missing it enough. There, see, it shows up now. That's got a lot of blue, but I don't mind it as yet. We'll see. Okay, there's also green while I'm at it. I always do this, and that's because acrylic paint, when you've got a color, if you don't use it, it runs out, it dries up. That's what it is, and becomes useless. So you may as well use it up while you have it made. It's trying to replicate the color. It's easy for me, but I hear from students that it's not that easy when you haven't got a ton of practice behind you. So while you have a color, a good idea to use it up. It doesn't waste paint that way either. So I'm adding these bits of green that somehow got lost in the, there's a fern here. They got lost in the darks. That's darker. I'll just put some dark on top. Okay, and I still have some of this color and it is in the path as well. Now most of the pattern in the path, even though it's individual leaves, it's going sideways. And that's because this path is going off into the distance. If we were looking at a leaf, say this was, a, my hand was a leaf, from the top, you'd see it like that. But because we're seeing all these piles of leaves on that kind of an angle, it tends to look like it's a series of stripes. Horizontal stripes. That happens with anything that you're seeing uh, at a distance. I'll move that up again, up a little bit so I can get the bottom. Okay, so back up to the foreground here. So we still have lots of this green. There's green back here that's not as bright, so we'll just put that in as well. A little bit of green back here, here. And more back here. And coming up this way and coming up that way. Okay, now even this top there seems to have a dark, medium, and light to it, so we're going to go darker on that. I'm going to get my black out, which I hadn't had to previously, just mixing the two, the blue and the yellow made it dark enough. But now I'm going to add some black to the mix and I'm going to get my red ready, just in case it's too strident looking. Okay, adding a bit of red to dull that down and make it more of a nature dark green than a plastic dark green. I'm going to forget, acrylic is plastic, so if you don't use it right, you can get a very plasticky look, which if you're painting nature, you don't want. If you're painting some modern thing, maybe yeah, but... And I don't know if this brush is going to be small enough for these shapes I'm doing. Well, sort of. I'm not uh, using the side of it so much as the tips, but I am going to switch to a smaller brush, even so. Okay, this one's a bit smaller and I can make more precise marks with it. So this brush here, smaller than the last one. So I'm coming in with a 
the very foreground bees, which really are dark. Oh, I could put a trunk in now too. So here's where the trunk was going to be, here. Going off there, and do it again. This time for sure I'm adding red because it's more of a brown. Might need yellow too. Oh, I have some. I'm just going to get back and have a look at this. Sorry, I kicked this thing. Okay, so um, this is uh, brown black for the trunks. Really, they're looking black, but the black from acrylic can be really tinned looking. So best, best to make it more nature-like and have a brown black if possible by adding more colors than straight black. If that doesn't make sense to you, then paint something in just straight black and you'll see that it doesn't look very natural. That's something that you can see by doing. Especially if you have a large swath of black, then it really looks contrived. I guess that's the way you put it. This tree doesn't have much of a bend, but it does have a bit. And then these go behind these ferns here. And that goes right off there, and I can cover it up again with leaves. Now the two on the other side, I can bring make sharper too. So there's this guy. He's in front of the bridge, so he has to be in front of the bridge. And this one here too, also in front of the bridge. Has to be in front of the bridge. There's nothing really coming off to either side. Make sure you're using thick enough paint for it to actually show up. A couple of branches coming that way. Okay, so they're in front of that trestle. Ground that trestle a bit. That's okay. And get some of these leaves sort of as if they're coming off. I don't know if they're coming off that guy, but I just want to make it look reasonable. That's not bad. Okay, so these leaf shapes are not, I'm not making the shape of leaves, but the shape of a clump of leaves and very general. And that starts out really black back here, comes in. Still dark here and there. More coming across here and down here. That's good. Okay, we don't want that. Uh, or do we? It's a bit darker across here, the whole thing. Down into here. Can go darker. Can bring that shadow out a bit more here? Because it is very dark. And then let's just add the two figures. Hmm. I'm not sure about the edge of this tree here. It's looking kind of straggly, so I'm going to get rid of that. If I bring those leaves back in, I can't just have a stripe there either. But the trunk was looking kind of shredded. There. I might have to go over that. It's too wet for me to work with right now. It doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put some extra darks in here because it has some. Get those two figures in and then we might put some more bright colors in. Now the figures don't have to look terribly realistic either. They just have to give the idea of being a figure. So we're going with a natural color again, which is black, pretty much, but made of a bunch of different colors so that it's not just black. It, it won't look right. Uh, you feel free to try just using black, and you might like it. You never know, but I sure don't. So, okay, so the figures are about from here to here. So we just sort of have to, there's two heads. Do stick figures, kind of. Again, pretty general. These look like aliens, that's fine for now. I don't want them to look like aliens forever. But we have to start somewhere. Okay. 
Now, here I need my glasses. What's going on with this person behind? Okay, that's all right. So, there's two people. Now, it is see-through at this point. Well, we can't have see-through people. So, we have to make that thicker. I'm okay with where they are. It's good to go lighter to start with because you don't know if they're going to be the right size or whatever. I'm going to switch the smaller brush again because we're getting a little more precise. Okay, so I'm making a dark color again from red, yellow, blue, and black so that it's a nice nature color. We are painting nature and people after all. Okay, and I'm going to thicken those up again if it will let me. That is, if the paint's dry enough to let me, which, who knows. Look a little more like a head. Well, I'll have to see what those look like from far back. In the meantime, these colors in this are kind of boring. So I'm going to have a look. I'm going to step back and have a look and see what I think. Uh, the people are still see-through, so I'm going to have to wait till they dry. I think that the whole thing as a whole needs more color. So um, I'm going to add more blue, um, brighter blue into the sky and some brighter oranges up in the leaves and on the path and then go over those people again when if they're dry or also this head's a bit too big so bring it back a bit while it's wet it's very easy to take paint out you can sculpt the bodies a bit from the outside by taking paint off just like we did with the bridge earlier So that's kind of all right for the figures. Let's get some color in there to make it look like a nice painting. Easy peasy. I'm going to have red and more yellow. I'll probably have to add some white for it to show up on the canvas. Get a nice vibrant orange. If I wanted to go detailed, by the way, it's super easy to make a uh, on the computer to zoom in but I don't want to go detailed in this case if you want to if that's more your stuff feel free to uh, enlarge the photo that you have and go for detail I myself I only paint detail if I feel it's necessary the more details you get the more uh, precise you have to be so that's both a pro and a con like a good both good and bad. Okay, I'm adding some color up here. I think it needs it. I do see this color in there. But I would say I'm exaggerating a bit. Which is entirely up to you. You can. So Take that back out a bit and then get some out and out really yellow up in there. Like that's too much, but I'll try to even it out a bit. I'm gonna add some brightness. I think I have to run it bigger. Too wet. Okay, we're going to go for straight lemon yellow and see if it'll show up. Yeah, could add a bit of white though. It's just looking a little. in your painting you lose your initial vision if that happens 
like in some ways it's best to do the painting all within the first few days when you're still fresh in your mind and you're excited about it. If it goes on longer and you forget what the heck you were painting it for, then you have to come at it from a new approach, which is to make it sort of beautiful from the outside, which is um, you're not necessarily trying to show a specific feeling that you had or perception of the area that you had when you first saw it, but you're trying to make it very beautiful or to have some kind of message that you want that's apart from the original one. You can just have a new one. So all is not lost if that happens. That is a fairly frequent occurrence. If you leave something for too long, you do lose what the heck you were trying to do in the first place. Okay, so some brights and some lights in the bottom as well, some leaves. Oh, I'm not having the best success, I must say, with getting these brights and lights. Now here, I'm actually painting sideways, but going back over it with very loose up and down strokes, so as not to make it up and down, but to even things out a bit. Going into the shadows. Now I have to have a look again. Now it's very light under here, so I'm gonna make it light under here. Now just so you know, I could tweak a painting endlessly and one of the big questions I get from students is, how do you know when you're done? Well, the way to know when you're done is, uh, there's a few ways. Either suddenly you go, ta-da, it does what I want it to do, which does happen, and it's a real thrill, I can tell you when it does. Or, you can be stuck and sick to death of the darn thing and put it aside for a while. And when you go back to it sometime later, you can realize that you actually really like it as is and it was done, and maybe that's why you couldn't go any further, is because in fact, it was done, or it is done. You don't have to improve upon it. It's perfect as is. That's really nice when that happens too. It's like, oh, it doesn't need anything more. I didn't realize. Because sometimes you're so stuck on that first vision that uh, you get too caught up in it and don't realize that it's already more than, more than what you need. Okay, the third thing is, uh, if you put it aside for some time, even though you may lose your original vision, as I was mentioning, suddenly you can look at it and go, I know exactly what it needs. And it doesn't come from thinking about it. It just comes suddenly. I don't know, maybe you're dreaming about it at night or something. Suddenly, the answer's there. And you know what to do, and it takes two seconds to fix it up, and you're done. So those are the three ways to know when you're done, in my opinion. It's like, mm, it's, can't paint on it anymore. So you put it aside and it turns out it is done or you can't paint on it anymore. So you put it aside and suddenly you know what to do or you can't paint anymore because it's perfect already. Now, in this case, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to put it aside. And well, it's not too bad. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. Looks like with just some small intervention, I could be very happy with it. But do I know what that small intervention is at this point? No, I don't. So I'm going to do what I do know to do, which is I just want to cut this branch back a bit. Ugh. Cut the branch back a bit. Trunk, that is. It's too fat. Again, before this paint sets, it's easy to take out. Once it does really dry, then you are not going to have such an easy time and you have to paint over it. But while it's still fresh, it's easy to do this. Okay, so uh, I might, yeah, I think the pick figures are going to have to come in a bit more. Or, I'm going to back that one up a bit. Just see. Well, I like it. But I do have to give it some time to decide if it's perfect, you know, if it's good or not. I'm not sure I like the colors up here. So um, I'm going to call it done for today, but that doesn't mean that I won't go back at it. Yeah, I think I'm not satisfied up here. I'll try a couple more things up here. 
I think it's the color combo up here that's a bit jarring. Just gonna soften up some edges. You notice I've gotten back from this painting several times to have a look at it, and that you really have to do to see where it needs help or to be fixed or is not balanced or whatever. Now, I don't like the stripe across the top, for example. Looks like a dark stripe. I'm just cut into that. a little bit of sky in here I think. The sky is underneath this so as soon as I take the paint off there it is. I'm gonna get back again. That's better. I'm just gonna take a little bit out of here too. So now you know ways to put paint on, take paint off. In other words, you don't have to be precise right off the bat. You can always go in and tweak later, especially with acrylic. That is the best aspect of acrylic is that you can endlessly fix it. Now that could be a handicap for some people who really don't know when to finish. But again, if you don't know, don't paint. Wait until you do know. The best way to wreck a painting is, oh, I don't know what to do. So, um, I'll keep working on it anyway. Don't. Wait till you know what to do. At least some part. Don't You don't have to wait to know what to do with the whole thing. But wait till you know what to do with the next step. And then if you're clear on the next step, go for it. But if you're not, you better put it aside for a while. Okay, I'm happy with that for the time being. Not necessarily forever. But for the time being. Yeah. For the time being, that's all right. I think in the end I might need some blue down here. Maybe I'll just try it. Just try and put some blue in. This is one of those cases where there is no blue, but I have to make it up. I just think some blue down here. I don't even know which color of blue. I'm just experiment. I can take it out really easily. And if I'm completely wrong, I'll just wipe it out. be subtle here. I like it more blurry there. I think I saw it said in a previous painting, sometimes it's good to balance the color just in one part of the painting with it in another. Okay, I'm going to call it a day on this, but I think I will go lighter in the sky a little bit just to spark it up and maybe a bit brighter on the path. I'm okay with the figures. So far. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Hope you're happy with yours so far. And if you don't like it, put it aside for a bit. You can always bring it to a class, wherever we have classes again, and ask me my opinion or what I think you could do. All right, that's good enough. So I hope you had fun with that one. We'll do another one soon. Okay, bye.